How's it going people, Sam and Slabby here, and this is a quest guide for Song from the Depths, start to finish, no fast forwarding, game on. So quest requirement wise, there are none, there is also no skill requirements, and there is also no item requirements. However, if you are kind of a severely low level, as in just starting the game, you will require some food as you pass through, as monsters can aggro. So to start this quest, you want to come over to Remington, and just to the west of the main square, you will find this house right by here. Go ahead and make your way inside and talk to Lucille to start the quest. Quickly run through the chat and ask if everything is okay, option 1. Run through the chat again and choose option 1, can I help? And finally go ahead and accept the quest. You will then receive a potion in your imagery, just go ahead and click on the potion to enter the dream world. So upon entry into the dream world, you'll notice a purple shadow walking away from you. Go ahead and follow that shadow. It'll head just slightly to the north outs of Remington and then make its way towards the east. And eventually you will come across a cave. Go ahead and enter that cave. So once you're inside, go ahead and make your way through. It's a one-way path, nice and straightforward. Eventually you'll be talked to by some random voice. Go ahead and skip through it and keep on running. Eventually you'll run into Raptor, go through the chat with him. And you can choose either option here, it's entirely up to you. Quickly run through the chat and Raptor will walk away. Go ahead and follow him through the doorway. So upon arriving into this room, the haunting voice will start to sing a song, and it'll also appear in your chat if you don't have the sound effects on. But when she sings a song, she'll tell you to go through certain passages. So for this part, make sure your camera is facing the correct way, and go ahead and make your way through the northern passage. In the second room, make your way through the western passage. In the third room, make your way through the southern passage. And in the fourth room, make your way through the eastern passage. You'll then be talked to again by the horny voice, quickly run through the chat, and go ahead and make your way through this cave as a one-way path. Go ahead and follow the purple shadows. Upon entering the next cave, you'll receive a little cutscene. Go ahead and skip through it. So for this room, there will be hidden symbols on the floor and all you need to do is simply run over them to activate them. But you won't be able to see them. So with that in mind, head to the northwestern corner of this room and eventually you will unlock one of the symbols right in the corner. Once you've done that, head over to the northeastern side of the room and you'll receive a another one. Upon doing so, a new passageway will open up in this room. This part is random for everybody, for me it's on my eastern side although it has been noted to have found on the north as well as the western side. So once you've activated all three of the glyphs and the door is opened, head on through. So into the next room, it's the same thing again, you're going to be finding more portals, so run over to the western side first, and you'll end up unlocking one just in the centre of the room near enough on the left side. Then run just slightly north of that and you'll unlock another. And last but not least you'll find the last one just to your east.
So again, same as before, a door will randomly appear somewhere in this room. It could be on the northeast or western side. Just go ahead and make your way through. So as soon as you're through, it's another linear path. So go ahead and run straight forward. Follow these shades as you're going through. And go ahead and enter the next cave. Upon which you'll receive another cutscene. So upon arriving in this room, we now need to do a bit of faffing about in here. First things first, run to the centre of the room, and right in the centre you'll see that an item is on fire right in the centre of the room. Go ahead and pick up the burning sapling. Next you need to place this burning sapling in the water pot. You can find out which one is the water pot by simply examining the pots. Although from what I know, they're in the same place, so in my case it was in the southwest. For you it may or may not be different. Once you've done so, run through the northeastern door. So you'll arrive back in the same room again, and some time has passed, and the burning sapling is no longer burning. Go ahead and pick up the sapling, and next you want to place it inside the fungi pot. So go ahead and place it in there, and once you've done so, make your way through the southwestern room. So once you've gone through the door again, yet more time has passed and you'll be in the same room. So go ahead and take the sapling once more. And this time you need to place it inside the ivy pot. Once you've done so, go ahead and make your way through the western door. And again you'll appear inside this main room. Go ahead and pick up the sapling. And finally place it in the old cobweb pot. Once you've done that, head through the eastern door, and for the last time you'll appear inside the same room. Only now the sapling has grown into a giant tree. So as soon as you are in the room, make your way to the north and head through the northernmost door. Quickly run through the chat in this next room, and you'll receive yet another cutscene. So, as soon as you regain control after that long cutscene, go ahead and jump off the cliff as well. You can do that simply by clicking on the end post. And again, you'll receive another cutscene. So after the cutscene's over, you will now be inside the belly of the dragon. All you need to do is simply run through these caverns, they're straightforward, there's no turn-ins or anything, simply run through and enter the cave on the other side. The only thing worthy of note is the large yellow pools on the floor, if you run across them, you will take damage over time. Although at the time it's recording this, the damage you take from it is pitifully tiny, so you really shouldn't have any worries here at all, especially if you brought a little bit of food no matter your level. So once you go through the first cavern, you'll appear in yet another one. Simply do exactly the same thing again. Carry on and run through this entire area. And again, you'll appear in a very similar room. And same as before, it's very linear. Just run straight forward and exit out through the other side. So 
So upon going through the third cavern, you will then receive yet another cutscene. Quickly run through the chat. Tell her we're not on an island, option one. And then option two, you're inside a dragon. Then option two, don't you know? Then option two, you've been bringing in the villagers. And then finally option one, all right. Upon which Raptor will enter the room as well. Quickly run through the chat again. Choose option one, wait, don't kill her. Then option one, we need her to escape. Again, you'll receive quite a long ass cutscene here, but you will get to see the Queen Black Dragon. So once the cutscene's ended, you will now appear in the overworld of Gilenor. Go ahead and choose option 2, what now? And then option 1, what about the siren? And you'll be handed three items. A crossbow, some coral bolts, as well as Remora's necklace. So where you are right now is just to the west of Port Sarum. In order to get back to Lucille to finish this quest, you need to simply head down towards your southwest. And the last part of this quest is simply talk to Lucille and tell her what's gone on. So, once you complete this quest, you'll gain one quest point, 700 constitution XP, a coral crossbow, 50 coral bolts, Remora's necklace. You'll also get reduced damage from the Queen Black Dragon once you fight her. You'll unlock the song Wending Through the Willows, and you can avenge Siren's death by travelling to the White Knight encampment south of Falador, which is where you access the fight to kill Queen Black Dragon. And as always, you'll gain two Treasure Hunter keys as well. So there we have it, that is the complete guide for Song from the Depths, hopefully you found this useful, and until next time, I will catch you later, have a good one.